It's hard to know that an image is made with melanin and not think of humans and human appearance, and specifically race. My work involves screen printing live genetically modified E. coli cells that make melanin. Melanin is one of the main pigments behind human skin, hair, and eye color. No matter what I print it, I want it, the relationship to our appearance to always be in the image. Because this is where my work led me, I had to venture out of the studio to get in the lab. It's not like I was dying to have to do lab work. You know, I have no bio background. I took one biology course sophomore year in college. I really did have to learn a lot for this project just to get a baseline. Making the ink is about a three hour process. It starts with making the base. The base is all the chemicals that the E. coli needs to grow in cell numbers and also the chemicals it needs to make the melanin itself. And at the end, I put in the live cells. Because I'm using a silkscreen process, I use the word ink, but that's actually not really accurate because people tend to think of ink as something that already has the color in it. And my ink does not. It's like pre-color. <laughs> and then the color happens after you print it. Culturally, art and science is so separated. While doing this work, it became very fluid. It became another way to make work. And for me, it's one of the many processes I use to create the work that I want to make. We're in the screen printing studios at CFA where I'm going to prepare a screen of this image, which is of dried vanilla beans. Vanilla is a highly valued commodity. It's the second most expensive spice after saffron. Its history is rooted in tremendous violence through colonialism and slavery. So to present images of various parts of this plant, from the beans to the flowers, through the pigment that's allegedly visual proof of racial hierarchy, feels very meaningful to me. After the E. coli is printed, it's placed in an incubator for about two or three days. During that time, the cells reproduce and produce melanin. As they're reproducing, they're also evolving, which means they start to make melanin at different levels, which then distorts the image. That part became really important for this process for me, just as important as the fact that it's the same pigment that causes human appearance. Because that distortion is the clue into the unconventional pigment and process behind the image. There's something about the image when you look at it, where you're like, what caused that? That's the unknown, and that's the part that keeps me going because I'm at this point very much addicted to that surprise.